Hey good people, welcome back to my channel. I am Anna Francis. Thank you so much for always tuning in. Thank you so much for always being there. I appreciate your diverse reactions and actions. Some subscribing, others not subscribing, others swiping it off, others subscribe and they don't come back. I love you so much and thank you so much for the new viewers for the returning viewers god bless you may you remain here may you decide to subscribe and may you make this the channel of your choice my name is anna francis thank you for being there and today i want to talk to single ladies i want to talk to single men and how you can remain happy happy and single because i want to give you tips on how you can remain to be happy and how you can prepare for that marriage and that right partner if at all you are planning to get married in future so why are you waiting for if you love such videos why don't you subscribe what are you waiting for i will wait on you to subscribe give this video a like and a thumbs up subscribe and let me know what you know about these topics and how you like these topics by commenting i will wait on you and i'll be back So I am here to talk to our single ladies and single men and some of the advice that I want to give us is that don't be overly obsessed with the marriage. I know somebody may stand here and tell me you're saying that because you're married but I know how it feels to be overly obsessed. So are you single? Are you planning to get married? Somebody told me that as Paul said in the Bible that not everybody is for marriage. There are some people who have chosen not to be married and to remain like that forever and the society judges them like nobody's business. So don't be overly obsessed. It's your choice. You don't want to get married? Fine. Let the society not reprimand you. Not let the society not judge you. I know it will judge you because according to our African traditions, you are supposed to be married, and once you're married, you're supposed to have children. Don't be overly obsessed. Try to be happy. Try to spend your time positively by planning yourself up. Are you there and you're planning to get married? You can remain to be very happy as single and as you prepare for the right person and as you prepare to get married. Love yourself. Spend that time you are single by loving yourself. That is one thing that I have written or one tip that I have written. Work on yourself generously. Practice self-love. First of all, start thinking about yourself because, before you are overly obsessed with marriage and focus on yourself first. Develop yourself as an individual. Make money for yourself. Start working. Make money. Be independent financially because some of us may be wanting that you are not financially stable and so you are looking for a man who is financially stable and so you look for that man who is financially stable and you don't get that man. So instead of that, as single, remain happy by focusing on yourself. Remain happy by being happy and ensuring that all focus is on yourself. Develop yourself, work for yourself. Guard your heart with all your diligence. Read papers, read journals, read materials that will help you and will make you to remain relevant academically, vocabulary-wise, here-wise, ensure that you read and guard your heart. Learn how to talk. Make yourself complete. You know, I am sorry to say this uh, because some people are getting into marriages when they are not complete, when they don't love themselves. So you don't love yourself. And so how are you going to love somebody else? You're not complete. And then you get somebody who is complete. 
And so issues start and by the end of it all, you find yourself divorcing. You find yourself not happy. So I would advise single men and single ladies to work on themselves. How will you know that this is the right person? Make this time you're single to, to, to set your goals. To set your visions. And so as you wait to get the right person, that right person you're going to get should be the person who is in alignment with your goals, in alignment with your vision. What is your vision? What is your ideal marriage? God is the one who is the starter and the creator of marriage. It is a ministry which is in God's ministries. So marriage is one of the ministries in God's many ministries. And so when God brought marriage into place, he brought marriage that is going to be happy. He brought marriage that people are going to be happy together. But you find that because of so many issues, people are not happy in marriages. And for your information, because I'm in it, the devil is very much at war with marriages. And so you single who is waiting to get married, I look for that couple that you feel that you are living the ideal marriage that you would want to have. And if it's people that you know, tell them, <coughs> sorry, to mentor you. You've been admiring from them, them from a distance. Let them mentor you. Are you a young man? Are you a young lady? Do you plan to get married? Tell them to mentor you so that you know the ideal marriage that you're going to have. Pray for your partner. Pray for the future marriage. What kind of a marriage do you want to have? They, they, sometimes back when I was getting married, somebody told me that they wanted to have a marriage like ours. They need to know that we go issues, we go through issues also. And so your marriage will not be like that other one because it is not built the same as yours. So build yours, make yours. Don't make yours to look like mine. Because if you want to live like me, you will be telling people that, you see, her husband does this to her, you don't do this to me. Her wife does this to him, you don't do this to me. You know, and, and that is the kind of marriage that you should not have. So have a vision of the marriage that you want to have. Pray for that vision. Get somebody who has that vision. Something else that I have written, pray for God's guidance. Don't be obsessed with marriage. Another thing that I want, I like telling the young ones is that age is just a number. Who told you that you have to get married at 20? Who told you that you have to get married at 25? Who told you that you have, okay, biologically, people will tell you or doctors will tell you after that you will not give birth. So what? So you kill yourself? You obsess yourself with marriage just because the society has placed you there? If God wants to give you kids, I've had people who give birth even at 50. Believe in God for heaven's sake. Don't kill yourself. Just because the right partner has not come, the society is pushing you, the family members are pushing you, for what? Take this time to be happy and make your singlehood happy as you prepare for that future marriage. The other thing that I've talked about or I've written here is that if you haven't worked on your completeness, just like I started by saying or I have mentioned before, you have no business to join another person. You meet somebody's son is very much complete. You meet somebody's son, daughter is very much complete and you bring the, your incomplete them in your incompleteness to them. It's not the best. Work on yourself right now, you're single. Make sure that your focus is on yourself. Be complete and pray to get a person who is complete because trust me, you don't want to join another incomplete person and you are too incomplete. And instead of working on your marriage, you're working on your issues. When you're single, you could not focus on yourself. Now you're focusing on each other and you're focusing on the wrong things, the issues, the baggage and the packages that you brought to each other. And that is why you see so many marriages are not working. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I have written here to help us to be happy in single, marriage is not for everyone. Some people have said that categorically they're not going to get married. Stop asking them when they're going to get married. They want to remain single and they're happy like that. 
And so, like Paul said, it is not for everyone. You can't remain pure and single and, of course, happy. And so, I also want to talk about you single ladies and single men that marriage requires a lot of commitment. Are you ready to commit? If you're not ready to commit, please, first of all, work on your commitment. If you cannot commit to yourself as a person, if you cannot focus on yourself and commit on yourself as an individual, don't get into that marriage if you cannot commit. It requires a lot of work. It requires a lot of commitment. It requires a lot of love. And love is not feeling the magica and feeling, I see you and I feel like melting. I see you and I cannot eat without you. That is not the love that I am talking about. Purpose is more important than marriage. Do you have a purpose? Have you come across your purpose? Do you, are you living a life full of purpose? That is a mistake that you are doing. You have no purpose for your life and you get into a marriage. You have no purpose for that marriage. And so you're wondering why am I or what am I even doing in this marriage? It is not the goal. The ultimate goal is not marriage. First of all, have a purpose-driven life. There are people who have succeeded when they are not married. I'm not saying that if you want to get married, you don't get married. Look at Oprah. Oprah is not married. Does she have kids? Somebody uh, educate me. I don't know, but she's living a very happy life. I hope so. You don't have to live like her. But I am saying that marriage is not an ultimate goal. Somebody should not kill you because you're not get married. Somebody should not kill you because you're married and you don't have kids. So single ladies and single men spend this time to think about these things. The other thing that I've written here is that if you are single and you want to, to get married, start preparing for that marriage. Make the ideal marriage on a paper and start praying for it. Start preparing for it. The dynamics that are involved in a successful marriage, analyze your life first. That is the focus. Analyze your life first as an individual. Write them down. Do you know how to talk to people? Do you know how to manage people? Do you know how to deal with people? If you cannot deal with yourself, how will you deal with somebody's son? How will you deal with somebody's daughter? Focus on yourself. Marriage has no age. There is no timeline like I began by saying. Like the society has taught us to believe. I've seen people getting married at 70. I've seen people getting married at 60. I've seen people getting children and family and even adopting their children. And they're happily married. So, why would the society tell us that you're supposed to get married at 40? What or walk the whole complete you as a single person? Use your singlehood to prepare and understand the purpose and the importance of a marriage. The purpose as to why God placed you here. You must know. Why are you here? What is the purpose that God has given you in this life? Once you get your purpose, once you've worked on yourself, then look for that person who is living a purpose-driven life. Somebody who is complete. And once you work on yourself, you'll definitely know somebody who is not working on themselves. I've watched videos where people have had the bringing up whereby they were not told to focus on themselves and when they focus on themselves, they are seen like they are selfish. I am telling you categorically, I started working on myself when I was an adult. I am still working on myself. So when you are single, you have all the time. When you commit yourself to marriage, children come, the husband is there, your wife is there. So you may not even focus on yourself as much as you're supposed. So take this advantage and be happy by focusing on yourself. And so these are some of the goals and some of the things that you can do in your singlehood. And you should do them very, very happily. God created a manual for marriage. So do you have that manual? Are you working on it? Get someone who can educate you on that. And so number one, use your singlehood to prepare for the purpose and importance of marriage. 
who designed marriage, who created marriage. This is for the people who want to get married. It is God. And number two, it's your time to create vision on your future. We've already done that. Your future marriage, your marriage, your future time. Find a partner in line with that. Find a couple, that one I've already mentioned. Successful marriage is intentional. It is not a, mass, a, a, a thing of I love you, you love me and let's get married. That is not it. Are you ready to commit? Have you worked on yourself? Are you ready for that love? That is all about marriage. Not I love you. You know, we love each other and let's get married. There's so much. There's so much into marriage. And then start preparing for your role. What is your role in that marriage? We say that I am a woman and I'll talk on behalf of the man. That he is the hand of the family. Yes, he is. But what is your role as a woman? What is your role as a man? Nowadays, we have roles being changed because things have changed. There are so many women who are working very well, who are doing very well financially. And you met this man or this man who is not financially doing well. So now he continues taking the role of educating your children when the money is not enough. Roles have changed. And so as a woman, when you're getting into marriage, as a man, when you're getting into marriage, Know your role in that marriage. It's not all about finances. There are so many things that are supposed to be involved in marriage. Have you worked on your interpersonal skills? How are your communication skills? How are your emotional skills? Are you emotionally, emotionally stable? Are you emotionally intelligent? How are your interpersonal skills? Do you have a self-love? Do you love yourself or you decide to love somebody else while you are empty? I always say in this channel is that you have to give from a cup that is full. If you're empty, you can only give out that emptiness. And this emptiness is what I call negative energy. You've got nothing to give. You're just there. You decide to join yourself with somebody's son and somebody's daughter. And all you are giving them is your emptiness. All you are giving them is your negative energy. And that is why you find them killing themselves, women killing themselves, men killing each other, women and men killing each other, killing themselves and killing children because there is a gap they are trying to fill. So are you single? Are you planning to get married? work on all those skills so that you don't mean a, meet a woman you don't meet a man when you're so bitter in your life and you're waiting for them so that they can become your prey where you can pour all your emptiness if you feel it is too much you cannot work on your you cannot focus on yourself seek for professional help let somebody help you focus on yourself if you are brought up in a family where people focusing on themselves meaning means that they are selfish, seek for professional help. Seek for people who can be accountable with you. You don't know how to talk. You've already involved or engaged yourself with somebody that you want to get married to. You don't know how to talk to people. How are you going to talk to them? Acquire knowledge. Attend seminars. While you're single, because once you start committing yourself into marriage, you may not even get time to do that. And so my advice is attend seminars, attend places where you can practice your uh, interpersonal skills, attend places where you can uh, practice self-love, attend places where your self-concept can be developed and where your self-esteem can be pushed that you have a positive self-esteem what you think about yourself and find a partner who has all those skills that you have gained while you are single because again having worked on yourself and meeting somebody who does not even focus in himself or herself you will have an issue in that marriage and so you realize you can have a happy singlehood because you'll be so busy focusing on yourself You'll be so busy setting your goals. You'll be so busy setting your vision. You will be so busy searching for knowledge. Attending seminars, attending school, or online classes and learning 
how you are supposed to deal yourself with yourself once you get married. So once again, as I finish this, pray for God's guidance. Above all, above focusing on yourself, above developing yourself, pray for God's guidance so that as much as you work on yourself, God guides you to the right person. God guides you not to a pretender, but a person who has really worked on himself. A person who has really worked on herself. A person who is really prepared for this marriage. And a person who is focused on this marriage. And so when you meet, you're both complete. Pray for God's guidance. And may God bless you as you enjoy your singlehood. You have a question? Thank you for being here up to this. Uh, up to this end of this video. Ask SMS me, not SMS me, uh, comment and let me know whether you have any question and I'll be gladly answering. May God bless you, may God keep you and thank you for watching. Hope you're going to leave your subscription and your love here. And may God bless you, may God keep you, may God meet you with the right partner. And God be with you always as you pray for his guidance. God bless you and shalom. I am Anna Francis and thank you for being here. I have been married for over 10 years and I can say I have really worked on myself. I can say that we've really worked on ourselves together with my partner. He's worked on himself, we've worked, I've worked on myself and now I can say we are in the same direction and I pray that we continue being in the same direction. Our vision is aligned, our goals are aligned. And remember, I am saying that we have been married for over 10 years. So marriage is also a journey. So as much as you focus on yourself, as much as he focuses on himself and you meet and you get married, now you start another journey focusing on your marriage, having worked on yourselves, and now you're complete. So shalom and God bless. Bye.